welcome. Hello, welcome to Crazy Blessed Worship. I'm Coley D. We've got the original Rick Ross. Hello, and everybody. We're joined by our dear friend Katie Williams. Katie, welcome. Hi. Um, Hi, Katie. We're going to kick off with letting Katie share a little bit about herself and how she got into worship. And then we're going to kick over and we're letting Rick drive today. <laughs> so uh, share a little bit about uh, where you, where it is you actually really first started to feel led towards worship, if you would. So I guess um, some history. I grew up in a non-Christian home. But my dad was in a band. He did a lot of country music and a lot of like old rock. Um, so I grew up in basements watching my dad rehearse with his band. And back in the day when you were allowed to go to like the halls, like before there was any rules about it, <clears throat> I used to go and watch him play. And um, sometimes he'd let me get up and sing with him. So that was kind of my first taste of singing, I guess, in front of people. Um, my first song I ever sang in church was a little girl was, uh, Jesus loves me. So I always like remember that time my dad played it for me <clears throat> and, um, fast forward, I moved from New Brunswick where I'm from up to uh, Alberta. And, um, I was about youth age at that point. So the youth were just starting to like sing in church and get on the worship team and they had their own youth group and things. And so I was like a closet singer you could say like I I love to sing but nobody knew who I was um so I seen all my friends singing and things and then eventually I just started kind of singing with them um and I had been writing my whole life like since I can remember my dad wrote his own songs so it was just natural for me to write and I was very, always writing poems and English was always my favorite subject so I always enjoyed like just creating something and putting my thoughts on paper um I've journaled my whole life as well so <clears throat> it was kind of natural for me, like to take my songs and, you know, or take my poems, sorry, and put them into songs. Um, and I just like to be able to have like, almost like a, I like telling the story of what God's brought me through. And I always joke about like taking songs and, or taking my prayers and putting them into melodies. That's kind of like what I, I feel like God's put on my heart. Um, and I don't mind sharing the good and the bad <laughs> I share it all so it's I'm very transparent um sometimes too much but yeah I just I feel like God's given me that I don't know whatever that is that I don't mind sharing when I've you know done things that I wish I hadn't and I'll just tell the story about that and how God brought me through it and kind of the process um but music's been a big part of my life um I learned harmonies when I was in high school my friend pounded out the harmonies on piano for me so that I could like get it in my mind and then eventually it just became my thing and harmonies is actually more where my my lane would be I would say I'm more of a I've always been a backup singer if you want to call it it's always been only like the last maybe 10 years or so that I've kind of started to step out more into the the leading role like the worship leading role um but I still Sometimes I would prefer to be singing harmony. <laughs> so, yeah. Kind of my background. Oh, and I did an album, I guess, 10 years ago. Um, I was pregnant with my first. And um, she came like two months after it was released. And I just didn't do anything with it. I just kind of let it go off into the abyss. And um, I just had like that whole decade. I felt so like discontent that I wasn't... Um, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing, you know, with the gifts that God gave me. And it was like, I'm sure it drove my, my husband crazy because I was always constantly like saying, I just feel like I should be doing this and that. And like, I just could never get settled. And this is the first time in over 10 years that I feel finally like I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be, even though there's a lot of things happening around me, but I, I feel content. I don't feel like I'm not like unsettled anymore like I'm actually in the lane that God has asked me to go in for so long <laughs> so yeah so it's been exciting well let me ask you this Katie how how does your husband feel about your your, your music I mean is he supportive <laughs> does he uh, try to encourage you in it or I mean how does he feel he honestly is the only he's one of the main reasons that I'm doing what I'm doing because um you know I've been an entrepreneur I work self-employed um so like I'm very mindful of the income that I bring into the family but I'm also mindful of what I take out of the family so um I did not want to um go on a this this journey because it is a financial journey as well there's quite a bit of cost involved in making your own music and things um 
and I, I felt very guilty. I didn't want to ask my husband to let, not that he had to let me, but like I, we, we asked each other. We're very, um, we honor each other in those ways and we make sure we check in with each other before we make obviously large um, decisions. Um, so I just felt bad, you know, asking my family to allow me to do this part and all of that. And he said, like, you have to do it. Like he was very much like, he almost is the one that pushed me a little bit more. Um, and even like, he jokes like, well, what if we have to move to the States? I'm like, simmer down. <laughs> I don't think I'm to that point, but he dreams bigger than me. Um, and it's just so beautiful because, um, I know that's not the story for everyone. Um, but I, I'm just so, um, like, so thankful. Like he, both times I went to Texas, it was him that was like, you need to go. I'm like, no, no, no. Like I can't, like, I can't leave the kids. I can't do this. And he's like, Katie, they'll be fine. You need to go. Like, this is, this is your dream. This is where God's called you. Like you need to go. Um, and even like just recently we were talking about more songs that I want to do. And, um, he's like, well, when you want, you just fly back to Calgary and record down there. I'm like, well, then that's a flight. And then that's what, like, there's so many things. And he's like, just whatever, we'll figure it out. He's like, but like, you should go there. Cause it, you know, it's really good quality, whatever. So he's, he's definitely been, um, a huge, huge piece of this, like behind the scenes, um, and he's a sound guy. So like he hears, oh, he is. Yeah. He's like, I would say he's the best sound guy in our church. My husband's on the little biased, but, um, he's very passionate about it and he studies it. He loves learning about sound. And, um, so when I show him my songs and even like things like he can like describe stuff that I wouldn't necessarily know how to describe, um, in the sound verbiage. Um, so he's really great. He helped me with all my demos and, you know, recording all those. So, yeah. Yeah. I remember one time you shared uh, the uh, little town or city you live in. What was the name of that? Fort something. Fort what? Fort McMurray. Yeah, Fort McMurray. And I was looking at it on a map, and it looked like it was closer to the North Pole than it was to the United States. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not. Was one day you were saying it was like minus forty six degrees. I was like, what? Yeah. We With haven't even gotten close to where I live. That I was like, what? It's it's pretty cold here. Yeah. Um, you know, it, going back to like, I've been sick, right? So like, you hear me coughing, that's why. Um, because the weather is uh, very up and down around here. So my, my sinuses don't love it. Um, I'm definitely made for Florida. I was just in Florida not long ago and I felt so wonderful. My, I never woke up, you know, feeling stuffy at all. It was great. Um, but uh, no, if you look at the map, there's like the territories and like right under there is us. <laughs> so, and it's pretty chilly. It gets pretty, but we have beautiful summers. So I can't complain. Yeah. I do complain sometimes, so, but. Yeah. <laughs> but even, even though your husband says that maybe you shouldn't, shouldn't move to the United States. So what do you think about moving? I, I personally think you should be in the United States. So what do you think? <laughs> Well, Florida has snakes, so, you know, but we have bears. So I think if you have to weigh the pros and the cons, um, we, ha we have this conversation quite a bit. Um, but, you know, I've always been wherever the Lord leads. Um, we've been very, very blessed. We love our town. Um, I've been here since I was 12. My husband's been here since he was 11, I think it was. Um, we met in church, you know, I met him when I was 14, actually. So there's a lot of history here. Um, this is like my... This is very much my home, my family. And so if, if God ever did call me away, he would have to be really, really loud and clear for us to, to make that kind of decision. But I do love to travel. So we don't mind uh, hopping on a plane and, and things. So we're very adventurous in that way. So, yeah, I did do a lot of traveling last year, though. So it was almost too much for me. <laughs> I did a lot of going back and forth. My family's on the other side of the country. So there was quite a bit of um, plane hopping. But um, it was a lot of fun too. I actually wrote a song on the plane, so that was fun. <laughs> See, there you go. You, you know, you can write songs when you're traveling. I mean, that's that's a sign right there. You know, I I just see you as you know, you know Lauren Daigle. We all know who Lauren Daigle is. You 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 have that Lauren Daigle quality about you. That look about you know she that she has her personality. She's very vibrant. You're the same way. You you, you kind of remind me of her, and uh -huh. uh, you just have that star quality. And I think Rick Pino recognized that about you. And I think most of us recognize that about you. I think there's something that you know, God has put in your life for a reason. And you, uh, I think, you, you know, something big is going to happen with, with your, your songs and uh, what he has for you, for sure. Oh, thank you. I I still struggle to hear those things. But I, I just think, like, my prayer has always been, like, and my music pastors prayed this over me, um, that 
I would be hidden behind the cross. So all they see is him. So, but yeah, if it means I got to stay on a stage for someone to see Christ, like I'll do it. You know, like I'm, I'm kind of, I can hide away or I can stand out, whatever he calls me to do. Um, I don't think he gave me my, my confident boldness sometimes that I have for nothing. Like I do think like he wants me to use it as for him somehow. Um, I don't mind, you know, getting up and doing things sometimes and, I'm always the one that asks to like talk when, when I'm in a room. <laughs> Not sure why, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I think it's just something God's put in my heart. I just I just like to um, just do what I can to share God's love in any way. Um, so yeah, it's so wherever He calls me, whatever He. So, I don't know. Always if I... had that. Have you always had that confidence? I mean, I, for me, I was like very shy. I had a hard time standing up in front of people and singing. I always hope my knees were always shaking. I was always very nervous. It's always off pitch because I was so nervous. What about you? Have you always felt confident singing? Have you just or just is it always been real confident for you? It's funny. Um, actually, our friend Amy from the group, um, when we first started, she sent me a, a Marco Polo, and she was telling me how, like, she just spoke into my life in such a beautiful way. Like, I was like crying from the stuff that she said, and I didn't even believe it all at the time, to be honest. And um, she just saw something um, and wanted to share it with me, and. <clears throat> Now she shared to me like the difference from when I started inner circle to now. And I've had other people say it as well. And it's not like um, a confidence like, wow, you're, I'm so amazing. It's not that it's like, I'm confident in what God has called me to do. Whereas before um, I often said this in the beginning, I mean, I've always been a backup singer. I've always sung with people or people have asked me to sing with them. Um, I've never usually been the one asked to like, lead a service right very very little times and that's okay I was I'm okay with that um but I always uh found it difficult when God would pull me out of that but I always felt like someone had to jump off the boat with me and that's what I used to say like and at one point I felt like God just said like you cannot wait for other people and that you think you're supposed to be you know taking this road with to jump off the boat with you I'm asking you to jump off the boat right now um, and I wasn't, I was waiting for like this person, you know, to come to where I was at with, with where God was calling me, but, and they're on their own journey. Right. Like, so I feel like we're all, we're on the same race, but everyone's in different ways in different places. Um, and it was just like a light bulb went off. I'm like, I have to jump. Like, I just have to jump. I have to just obey. Right. And many points I've been thinking, <laughs> but God, you know, as the Bible says, he immediately takes you out and he helps you. So like, um, I've just been like walking in that, but yeah, I was not always confident at all. Very much mm-hmm. not. <laughs> so how about your daughters, your daughters? Uh, I know that I'm sure they support you. How, how much are they involved if, when in your music and, our, and everything that you're doing with that? So they're so sweet. And as you've seen on Marco Polos, they can also be very um, bold and confident themselves. Um, sometimes not the way I want them to be, but uh, no, my uh, oldest has been actually the third song I'm releasing here soon. She helped me write when she was like five years old, I think, or six years old. Um, she was doing a, a concert at, at church called Back to the Cross, and she really wanted to write a song about it. And she had seen me writing, so she kind of like, you know, sees what mommy does. She wants to do the same thing. So um, I was like, well, let's write a song. So we took out the voice memo, and like, I kind of encouraged her how to like match words and rhyming and different things. And I actually really liked it, and I submitted it to a song competition um, after that, and actually tweaked it after that. So what you're going to hear is a new version, I guess you could call it, of, of that song. Um, but yeah, she's very, she journals, she loves to write, she loves, she did a concert at her recess yesterday at school. So like, she's very, she's further along in her boldness than I ever was when it comes to like being in front of people. Um, and then my youngest, like, I think she's going to be a pastor or a preacher or something. That girl is like, she's got a boldness, but she's also got like this hunger for the word. And like, it's crazy. She's only six years old, but um, the stuff that she talks about when we do devotions at night and um, the way she comprehends the Bible and like knows, like understands it completely blows my mind. So I'm just awesome. excited to see what God does in their life too. So awesome. Call yeah. You to share. Call you wanted to ask you something. Yeah. I wanted to ask you kind of more touching along the lines of some of the stuff you were mentioning, like even being sick and whatnot and kind of being drawn out. Um, I was telling Katie earlier that one thing I noticed about her is when I observe somebody that I'm like, 
man, they've got some spiritual warfare in their way. It really highlights to me that there's something in them that the enemy doesn't want out there. Mm-hmm. And you really kind of spoke into something that we've been talking about in our church. We've been talking about what it is in the Bible, how it talks about how you've got old wineskins and new wineskins. And what does that even mean in mm-hmm. breaking down how part of that has to do with like if we stay in these old wineskins, we can't grow into those new ones. And mm-hmm. Um, one of the things we're talking about is like coming out of our comfort zones, which you've clearly done quite a bit of. And the Lord had highlighted to me, like when you're talking about jumping out of the boat, that so long as we are surrounded by the living water, it's okay mm-hmm. to jump in because he's not going to let us drown. He's going to hold us up. And yeah. I'm wondering if you'd speak into some of that spiritual warfare because the song mm-hmm. first love that she's got out now, um, it's an amazing song. There's an amazing story behind it. But I want to go into your recording a little bit when you were in Texas, because you were sharing it. It wasn't glamorous. There was a lot of warfare and actually came out better because of it. And that's just something I feel like somebody needs to hear today. Yeah, that was an adventure. <laughs> um, so it was exciting. I was very excited to go. Um, my girls got sick right before I left. Um as has been the pattern, it seemed every time I was going somewhere. Um, and uh, so I wasn't feeling my best when I showed up and I had booked a recording right after our two day sessions that we had had together in Texas. So um, I was very anxious the whole two days during the, the conference um, because I was feeling really under the weather. Like I just wanted to go lay down and, and, and rest. Um, and then, but I was like, okay, I can still breathe. I'm good. I just feel run down. But the morning I showed up to go record, which this is the, I, I, I recorded with someone who was recommended by Rick Pino. He's incredible. His name's Travis Kennedy. Amazing. Um, he actually has been remixing some of the other stuff that I had worked on um, with another project because I just love his mixing. So um, so he's got his hand on a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. Uh, so he's just been great. Um, but I showed up and um, I'm at this beautiful studio, Orb Studios in Austin, Texas. Um, Justin Bieber, Pentatonic, they've all recorded there. So I'm like so excited just to be able to like sing into a mic that they sang into. Like it was just like, I mean, I think every one of us would think that was pretty, pretty cool. Um, so I walk in, but sorry, I'm in the parking lot and I cannot breathe out of my nose. It is completely solid blocked. Um, I guess te- Texas has really bad allergies as well down there. So um, I reacted really bad down there for that. And, um, but Travis was so good. He was like, it's okay. Everybody, this happens all the time. Texas is terrible for all abuse. So he sent me to the grocery store. And so I come back with all the things he told me to get. And I'm in this beautiful studio in the washroom doing the neti pot because that helps you clear your sinus. I'm got all the things and I'm in there. And then one other thing he had told me to do, and I still do it when I record is jumping jacks. So he's like, get your blood moving. You got to do some jumping back jacks. So I come out of the bathroom. My hair is curly, my naturally curly. So like, I'm like, my hair is starting to poof off because I, I'm like, um, just going all like crazy. And then I'm singing like the first song. I think we did it like two or three times and it was still not where it needed to be. So he boiled a huge pot of water um thankfully no one else was in the studio that day um and then uh he got a towel and he brought me into this other room which was an amazing room I have pictures of it um and I sat over the pot of water three different times three different times that day um and so like that's where my hair would go (laughs) so I'm like I was like you know you dress up you want to look nice at the studio and then my head comes out of this towel and I'm just like I look like I just came from the spot right so he added it he said he's going to add it to his uh portfolio of spa treatments because that's you know he had to do that three times and like he boiled the water um he made me tea all day long like made sure my tea was constantly topped up um like he was great so but it was I was nervous because I was there alone I was like oh my word like this is not a cheap day like here I'm sick my family you know are home taking care of things I'm here trying to record and I'm sick and I was very discouraged um and then so I went home that night had a very crazy adventure at a hotel I don't even want to go into all the details but there was bugs I ran for my life my husband found me another hotel it was an adventure um so I finally get back to the other hotel I rest I wake up the next day I feel a little bit better 
Um, and so um, anyway, we sang, I can't remember if it was the first day or the second day, actually, I sang one of the songs that you'll hear later on this year called Waiting. And it's a song that I, I, I wrote before COVID, but I, I let people in my Facebook world hear it during COVID, right when it first started. Um, and um, so it was a very, um, what's the word, a precious song to me. It, it, was, it was from a very real place in my life. And actually I wrote it because I was waiting for God to show me what he was going to do. Like, I was almost like, okay, God, like what's happening here, you know, like, but I'm going to trust you no matter what. And it was just from Isaiah 26, three, I believe is the scripture I wrote it from. Um, my mind is at peace when my thoughts are on him. Actually it's on my desk. Uh, when I say fed best and I trust him. And so, um, that was that song. So anyway, I'm singing this song and I'm like, I am going to sing my heart out. God, this is for you. I didn't even open my eyes and no joke. My abs were sore later that day because I, that's how much I sang from the pit of my stomach. I just wanted to sing, um, right from my heart, but to the Lord. And like, I just, he shut all the lights off. I took my shoes off. Like he made it very, um, intimate. Cause it's hard to kind of connect sometimes when you're in a studio trying to like connect to the words you're singing. Um, so when I opened my eyes and looked up after I sang this song, his mouth, I can remember it. It's so funny. His mouth dropped and he went, wow. And I'm like, what, what was wrong? And like, he was like, I felt that. And I was like, okay, mission accomplished. Like if you felt it, you know, and we're in a studio, like, um, that's, that's all that matters. And I know that that song is going to touch hearts because, um, it's just, it is, it's already touched hearts. I've sang it in my church before. Um, and it's just a really, I, I can't wait to release that one. I'm excited for that one, probably most of all, of all my songs. Um, but yeah, it was an adventure. It was a crazy time. And actually during my time there, I'll touch on another thing, I guess. When I was in this, the sessions, I got a call from a family member um, that one of my other, I won't say who, but um, some of my family very dear to me was going through a really tough situation. Um, so I'm like in the bathroom, I'm crying. I'm trying to like pull myself together because my heart just wanted to go home. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we had a family member pass, pass away while I was there. So it was just like a bam, bam. And then, um, I missed the funeral. I was flying home the day the funeral happened. Um, and then two weeks later, my grandfather passed away. So it was, it was just a really strange season. Um, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, there was lots of things happening. I mean, I, like we said, I could talk for hours about the, the things that have come at me this past year, um, that, you know, I didn't feel like my life was that like topsy turvy up until I started joining this, and then things just kind of went crazy there for a little bit. But somehow, you know what, the Lord sustains you, um, and He is the the one who gives peace, right? When we stay fed, steadfast, we trust in Him. So um, I just kept my eyes on Him, and I had to let go of a lot of, um, you know, I was saying too, like you gain so much from this process. You learn a lot about yourself, and you learn things that God wants to show you. And he, he gives you these songs and um, you have people that are starting to see like, wow, like that song ministered to me. And you see all these things, but then you also, and I think you guys could probably both really this, there's like this bit of a, a grieving point. There's a loss at some points too. Katie, I hate to cut you off, but we have less than a minute according to Zoom. Oh, no, so no what I'd like to do is come back with a part two. So I'm going to quick rack, uh, wrap right. up, but watch for that. Um, if you would, please, we're going to share Katie's song link with you in the comments, like, love, share if you would, and in, if you're interested in getting on the wait list for our coaching program, email me at crazyblessedworship.com, and we wish you a crazy blessed day.